Hi and welcome to Bailey and Fishing. I've set myself a bit of a challenge on, as you can see, it's a really wild summer's day. And what I'm trying to do is catch two carp during the course of the day. One close in, almost really just from the tip of the rod. And the second one, later on today, I want to try and catch off the top. Now for this challenge, and I'm on this part of the challenge, I'm on a difficult top flight carp syndicate water. And I'm going to try with a float, but I've also got a secondary rod made up, which is really just a free line boilie. So I'm going to fish the boilie on the float, and I'm going to keep my eyes skinned. And if I see carp activity either right or left of me, I'll move on to the second rod. Now, my belief is that you can catch carp on even tough waters in a couple of hours, two, three hours, if you really sort of use your watercraft and if you like fish in a crab tree sort of way. And it's something I love. I love carp, but I love doing it my way. And I'm not one for bivvying up. I'm not one for great long stay sessions. I just want to be in and out because that fits with my lifestyle. So let's see how I can get on. So okay, this is part one of the carp adventure. And we're on a well-known carp syndicate water. A beautiful place, a lot of good fish in here. Um, I've done very well here this year, myself and with guided clients and friends. We've had a really a lot of carp, often within just two or three hours uh, fishing. So it, it can be really quite prolific. And, and of course, because this bank is very rough, it's barely ever fished. So I know that uh, I'm, I'm pretty free to fish along here, which I love because it faces the predominantly southwesterly wind. So there's a good push of wind most days up against these reeds. There's fabulous depth out here. We're talking about 11, 12 feet, which is perfect for the carp as they move around this massively thick reed margin, which again, they adore. So it's, it, it's unfished, it's facing the wind, it's deep close in, and there's a great marginal reed bed. So it's got everything I'm looking for. What I like to use is a decent sized waggler. This takes about two AAA shot. I put the shot up by the float so they lock the float. Then I have no weight on the line whatsoever. None at all. So effectively I'm almost free lining the boilie but just with the float as an indication. It is incredibly important in my book to have no shot on the line between the float and the hook on the bottom. If you've got shot in mid-water, both carp and tench, if you're after tench, really don't like it. They can see the shot, they can feel the shot. It's a complete no-no. That's why I have the locking shot up by the float at no shot on the line and a 15 mil boilie almost always acts as a sufficient anchor unless the wind is really, really violent. In this depth of water, you don't always get much indication of when there are carp around you. What I tend to look for is just little patches of bubbles, often just single biggish bubbles that rise to the surface. Very occasionally a carp will crash out or just roll. But you're almost looking at your float alone just to give you clues. And especially when it's a little bit calmer than today, when there are fish in the swim, you'll just see the float, it, it just trembles, it just drifts. And of course, sometimes it rises up. And if you think about it, you could easily have 10, 20 pound fish. I think I've got a big tench here. Yeah. Super tench. And what a beautiful tench. 
a good six pounds, perhaps even a bit bigger than that. Nice nick, female tench. That first run made me think it could easily have been a carp. But of course, I'm a tench angler at heart, so I love this fish. I'm using a 12 foot Hardy Marksman rod, which is one of my favorite ever. Um, they were tremendous rods, still are. So adaptable, you know, I've landed carp over 40 pounds on this one, and it's still a brilliant rod for a, for a two pound roach, if you can find one. Absolute cracking rod, lovely rod. Because I'm so close in, I'm using one of the Piscario center pins. I use a pin simply because I love the control it gives me on a big fish, over a big fish, close in, and you just feel as though you're in touch with the runs from the word go. It's just a lovely tool. Well, this is a turn up. There was some bubbling a bit further up the bank. So I had this second rod with just two or three shot on the line and popped a boilie out and it went literally, literally in two minutes. So I've got to wonder whether just getting rid of the float worked in this instance or whether it was just one of those things. But one of the great lessons of this is that I've now been fishing two and a half hours and I've had fun with bream and tench and a great big hybrid. If I hadn't have been fishing this close in, I would not have noticed that activity five yards to the, five yards to the right of me, which was crucial. I wouldn't have put this second rod out otherwise. It's so, oh, what a lovely common. What a cracking fish. And it's so wonderfully tactile, this. You know, I haven't got a three pound test curve rod. I'm not fish playing it at a hundred yards. It's all under the rod tip. Just brilliant. I'm enjoying the sight of the fish. And it's taken me two and a half hours to get a lovely, lovely common. Nearly there. You can almost see from here how I've spaced the shot up the line just to keep it on the bottom. Great barbel trick that as well. And there we are. Well, you'll have to believe me, this is just about the smallest carp we've had from the lake here. But I really, really don't care because he's a beautiful fish. Any carp in my book is a cracker. And what I'm doing is just creeping in, fishing around the edges of the big boys and having some wonderful, wonderful sport. It's just magnificent. So I really want to put him back now. Well, the float has gone, and that fish did run about 60, I would say 60, 70 yards. And it's just hanging now. What I don't want, the great fear of this is that it kites. If you lose a fish, it's nearly always because they begin to head either right or left into this reed bed. And you mustn't let that happen. If you think it's going to kite, if you can, you've really, really got to belt into them. It's absolutely essential. Because otherwise, you've got a hell of a job on your hand to land them. Now, I've, I brought this back a good 60 yards. And the pin has just been absolutely brilliant for this. It's a much, 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 much bigger fish. It's hanging very, very deep. 
Here we go, you've seen the float, which is good. You're going to see the fish in a minute. So, I've been fishing now about three and a half hours and this is the second carp I've hooked. So, I really, really hope this is proving a point that you can come to a difficult top of the range water, fish in close, fish for them in a way they haven't been fished for before, and really do the business. I don't go light. This is 12 pound line. I want to put pressure on them. It's massively dramatic this with the wind, the rain. This could be, a, I'm not saying this is a 30, but we get 30s like this. Now there we go, we can see the float again. It's not done yet, but at least I feel as I've got a bit of control over this. If I can keep him no further than 20 yards away from me, that's, that's good. This wind and drizzle cloud depression coming in is brilliant for carp. My only worry is whether they'll be on the top later on, but I'll worry about that if and when I land this. This is looking better. I'm getting some sort of control over this thing. I've got, I've got my great mate Robbie down the bank. I think I might ask him to do a bit of stealthy bank side ninja. Hello mate. Hello mate. That's a big fish. Uh, that's a big fish. Big 20, possibly a 30, I think. Well, certainly a 20. Oh, I can't wait to see this one on the bank. Got it? Yes! <laughs> oh. Well, you landed it, you can hold it, my love. <laughs> oh, wow. That's a big fish. Yeah, big That's fish. Heavy. Beauty. Just under 30. Wow.